Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial on Stable Diffusion. First of all, quick channel update. We have recently passed the 1000 subscribers. Thank you very much, I really appreciate everyone. I wouldn't be able to do this without all your support. I recently published two videos on how to use Stable Diffusion on the Windows operating system. One is about how to use the AMD GPU and the other is how to use NVIDIA GPU. You guys had a lot of questions and you also encountered problems during the installation. So I wanted to make a video to talk about all those problems that you might encounter and I'll also show you how to fix those problems on your end. So let's take a look at some of the common problems together. I'm going to list all those questions on the screen and I'll also put the timestamp beside all those questions for easy navigation. So let's take a look at all the questions together. The first common problem that you encountered was about this module now found error. So I'm going to show you what that means. Let me open up a Anaconda prompt. Inside this Anaconda prompt, I can run the Python interpreter here uh, by just typing Python. And now I'm inside Python. So let me try to import this Omega prompt library, which is what's causing the problem here. And as you can see, uh, I got the same error message here saying module not found error, no module named Omega Conf. So let's exit out of Python and let me show you what that means. Omega Conf is a third party library that we need to install in order to run the stable diffusion software. To check what third party libraries we have already installed on our system, we can type pip list. And this is going to show us everything, all the third party that we installed to this copy of Python on our computer. So if we scroll up, here are all the libraries that starts with the letter O. And as you can see, there's no Omega Conf library here. Another way to check it is just by typing pip show and then plus module name, Omega Conf. So sometimes I call them Python modules and Python libraries. Sometimes I tend to use them interchangeably. So they mean the same thing. So how do we fix this? There are two approaches. One is that simply type pip install and then plus the module name omega conf in this instance. If your error message says something else, then simply replace this omega conf with the missing library on your end. And the second approach depends on whether you installed a virtual environment for your stable diffusion software. If you have installed a virtual environment, then chances are you probably forgot to activate your virtual environment before you run the stable diffusion software. Let me show you what that means. So on this window right here, I am actually logged into my other computer, which also has the stable diffusion software. If I type pip show omega conf, it's also not going to find it because we don't have the omega conf library installed under the base Python. So see how this thing here says base. And basically this means your global Python interpreter. So this base here refers kind of to a virtual environment. So if you follow my video on how to run stable diffusion on Windows, chances are that you have already created a virtual environment. So for example, you might have created something called LDM. In that case, just type conda activate LDM. When you type this, then you will see that the base will become LDM which means that now we are in the LDM virtual environment. And now if we type the pip show omega conf, we should be able to see it here because we installed the omega conf library in the LDM virtual environment, not in the base environment. And now once you're in this virtual environment, you can try to type the script to run stable diffusion again. And most of the time this should solve your problem. All right, since we're talking about virtual environment, let's continue with that topic. Some viewers asked that, is it possible to install the code and run stable diffusion without the virtual environment? The answer is yes, it's uh, totally okay to run the code without using a virtual environment. And the reason that I suggest using a virtual environment is because that if you mess up something during installation, then you can just wipe out that virtual environment and start from scratch with a fresh new copy of Python. But if you don't use a virtual environment and you just install a bunch of libraries on your global Python, and sometimes when you have problems with your global Python interpreter, then you will have to reinstall it basically. And the other thing is that if you use Python regularly, for example, like we use Python for other projects, then most likely you will want to use separate virtual environments for each of your projects. So that way you can keep all the libraries isolated and there should be no conflict whatsoever. If you want to skip virtual environment, that's totally okay. You can skip the creating steps and also you can skip the activating steps and just install everything onto your global Python. If the only thing that you use Python for is to run the stable diffusion, then I guess it's okay. 
But if you need to use Python for multiple projects, then the best practice is using a virtual environment. The third common problem is with the Hugging Face login. So when you try to log in Hugging Face using the Hugging Face login CLI login, so when you're on this page, essentially we need to copy the access token from the Hugging Face site and paste it here. A lot of people had a problem with pasting that token here myself included, there's one viewer suggested that instead of using the usual paste shortcut, which is control V, uh, control V doesn't work here. You can right click on the window to paste token there. So let me show you. So to get the Hugging Face access token, first come to the Hugging Face website and click on your user profile icon, go to settings, access token, and if you don't have one yet, just click on the new token that will generate a new token. So I'm going to hit this thing here and copy the token. Then when I come back to this window and then when I hit control plus V, it's not going to recognize it because the way this part is coded, it's trying to get a password input from the user. Whenever it's a password input, whatever you type will be hidden and you cannot use the paste functionality to here. So let me show you. Now on this login page, even if you try to type something, you won't be able to see it because it, it's all hidden because it's a password. And instead of pressing control and V, I'm just going to use my mouse and right click. I think you can right click anywhere inside this window and then press enter. This way you will be able to log in successful. Let me show you another way to get past this step. And this is kind of a hacky way. This is my virtual environment folder. And inside here, go into lib, type packages, and then find hugging face hub, comments, user. Don't double click on this because this is a .py file, which means a Python file. Double clicking it means you want to run this file most of the time. What you want to do is right click on the file and open it as a notepad. Once you have the code open in a notepad or any text editor, just scroll down and look for that hugging face thing here. So this is the part that it's trying to get the token or the password from the user. So instead of letting the system do that, we're going to comment out this get pass and you can just type a hashtag here. This means comment and type two single quotes. This is basically means a Python string. We're going to paste our access token between these two quotes, right? And then save the file and close it. This way, when you run this Hugging Face CLI login, I won't ask you for your password or your token. I will just use whatever you put into your script as the token uh, for the login. All right, so the fourth common problem is a lot of people got this error file not found error window win error two. the system cannot find the file something something in most cases this is related to not having the git program properly installed you want to install this git program first i'll leave the link in the video description below so just go here and download for windows and then install it git is a version control software that a lot of programmers use so it's totally safe totally legit program and when you try to install it it will ask you for a lot of options to so just go default with everything and just next, next default and you'll be fine. After installing Git, what you want to do is rerun the command that you run before when you get this error message, file not found. And it depends on where you got this error message. Um, sometimes you might have to wipe out your current virtual environment and install a fresh one because sometimes this error message can occur during environment installation. So that means you have a partial virtual environment installed and it's not complete. So it's not gonna be good you have to first remove that virtual environment and the way to do that is like this i am currently in this ldm virtual environment if you're also already inside the virtual environment the first thing you want to do is you want to uh, conda deactivate so basically you want to stop using this virtual environment and then you want to remove it from your system uh, you can do that by typing conda env remove dash n LDM. I'm not going to run this because that will remove the LDM virtual environment from my system and my system is still good. So I don't want to do that, but you will want to do that on your end. If your installation is not complete after hitting enter and removing the LDM virtual environment, you also want to do another thing. Come to your C drive and users and just look for your own username and then go to Anaconda three inside this ends 
folder, you will see the LDM folder. And this is the folder for that virtual environment. Although you removed it through the command line here, you will still see the folders here. And this folder contains all the third party libraries. So you want to delete this folder. That way you will have a clean slate and then you can reinstall a fresh virtual environment onto your system. The next question is, how can I get different images for one request? I'm going to talk about how to do it on both NVIDIA and AMD versions. So if you're using NVIDIA version, this is the official stable diffusion code. Inside here, you should have a text to image .py file. Just open this up in the notepad or a text editor. Don't double click it because that will run the script instead of opening it. Once you have this script open, press Ctrl F, search for seed. It's going to be this line here. What you want to do is you can either put a hashtag to comment this line out, or you can just delete this line altogether and then save the file. This way you will remove the default seed, which is 42 from the script. So that means basically every time from now on, every time you run the script, it will use a random number as the seed for AMD version. You should have the code like this. It's going to be in the diffusers, DML, examples, inference inside this DML onyx.py file. Again, open this in either notepad or a text editor. Also search for the keyword seed because this is setting the random generator to a fixed number. So that way, every time you run the script, it will generate the same image. And once you comment this out or you remove this line, it's going to start generating different images every time you run the script. So this is how you would do it for AMD. All right. The next question is how to get multiple images in one command. There are many ways to do this. I'm going to show you the way I do it in the NVIDIA version, in the official stable diffusion code, you can add an argument from file followed by the file location. And the file is really just a text file. You can include multiple prompt in the file. Just make sure that for each prompt, you want to list them on separate lines. So basically here I have five different prompt. When I save this file and I use the from file argument and then add this file location after that, it's going to generate five images, one for cat, one for dog, a tiger, a flower, and a car. That's how you can generate multiple images using different prompt. If you want to generate multiple images using the same prompt, you want to use this argument here. It's going to be an eater. By default, this is setting to two. Stable diffusion will run twice will give you two different images. And the way to use this prompt is something like this. You can type Python, I believe it's scripts, text to image.py prompt, and then n iter, let's say 10. With this n iter argument, you're basically running the text to image 10 times while using the same prompt a cat. So this is how you would generate multiple images for the same prompt. These are for the NVIDIA GPU. All right, next, let's move on how to generate multiple images on AMD GPU. So for the AMD GPU, we're going to use the DML onyx.py file. And inside this script, scroll down to the bottom where you see the prompt. So here you're going to need to modify this. Let's say if you want to generate multiple images for different prompt, you want to put each prompt inside separate pairs of quotes. What I mean by that is, for example, uh, you can generate a cat and then comma and then a dog, comma, a tiger. Let me remove this for a second. Basically, you're instructing the stable diffusion to generate a cat, a dog, a tiger. So you're running three times using three different prompts. Let me comment out this for now. If you want to generate multiple images using the same prompt, what you want to do is, so let's type the prompt and then equal to square brackets means a list in Python. You want to type your prompt as a string variable. You can create the string data type by typing just the two single quotes. And here, let's say a flower. If you want to generate 10 different flowers, what you want to do is after this list, just type multiply. And this way, stable diffusion will run the same prompt a flower 10 times, and then it will give you 10 different images. On to the next question. 
how do we make the image resolution higher? This is much easier if you are using an NVIDIA GPU. You can just use two different arguments to control that. One argument is H stands for height. The other argument is W stands for width. To use these arguments, what you want to do is after typing the prompt, and then you can just type dash dash width. By default, these are 512. And then also the height is also 512. You can change these values, for example, 10, 24, that will give you an image twice the width. Just note that the higher the resolution, the longer the runtime will be. In terms of the AMD higher resolution, I don't really recommend running a higher resolution on an AMD card because AMD cards are very slow to generate these images. For me, I have an RX 580. It takes about three minutes to generate a single image with the default size 512 by 512. So I really wouldn't recommend generating images any higher than the default resolution. But if you really want to, let me show you how to do that. First thing that you need to do is this is the code for the AMD graphic card. Go to examples, inference. You have to change the code in two scripts. So the first one is, is save onyx.py. Scroll down all the way to the bottom and in the last line of code, both height and width are 512, uh, which is the default size. You can change the size here, for example, 768. To save the file. You have to run this save underscore onyx.py file first in your command prompt. It's going to download the weights and then convert them into the onyx file using this height and this width. So basically with AMD, whenever you want to change the image resolution, you have to re-download all the model weights and then reconvert to those onyx files. This is the first step. And the second step is that you have to also change the code in the dml onyx.py file. Also scroll down to the bottom. So here you also have these two parameters, height and width. And because in the previous one, in the save onyx, .py file, we change this to 768. So these two measurements have to match to whatever you set in the previous file. Otherwise, it's not going to run. And then after you change this, you save the file, close it. And now if you run it, it will give you images with a different resolution. But again, like I said, I highly, highly don't recommend using AMD to generate a higher resolution image. It's going to be very, very slow. All right. That's all the common questions that many people have asked. In case that I missed any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll try my best to answer them and help you get your stable diffusion running. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.